everyone welcome back to the channel uh today's down and dirty was a topic request from jessica but before we get into that i wanted to talk about today's sponsor technigadgets.com uh, these guys have sent me actually the shades that i'm wearing today these are actually some pretty nice shades uh, they're really affordable and one thing that i really like about them is the fact that they're not ultra polarized they are polarized so they do a good job of blocking out the sun but if some of you guys are familiar, especially when you're looking at GPS screens and stuff like that, if sunglasses are too polarized, they actually block a lot of that. And it's kind of frustrating to look at screens. These are polarized just enough to where they're not too bad. So if you guys are interested, head on over to technigadgets.com and plug in the code diesel and you will get a discount on anything you buy off of the site. So now let's get into uh, today's topic and it's kind of how to be more efficient in a dozer like I said this was requested by Jessica um, and I will pre-apologize just because I don't think I'm gonna have any like just super pearls of wisdom for you um, a lot of this is just kind of things you develop over time and I just kind of want to give you an idea of what I'm thinking about so the first thing I will tell you is there is a little known secret in most dozers that I would say the vast majority of dozer operators don't know about so what we are traditionally as dozer operators, what we're used to is having a decelerator pedal where it decelerates the engine. So with it depressed to the floor, my engine is at idle. And if I let off, we're at full bore. That's a decelerator pedal. But most dozers, if you go into the menu, will have an option where we can change this from a decelerator pedal to a transmission control pedal or a track speed control pedal, however you want to think about it. So basically the engine will stay at full throttle or whatever throttle setting you have it on over your, on your dial. The engine will stay at that RPM and the only thing that will change is your actual track speed. And so I'm going to do that on this dozer. So I go into my menus and you guys can't see this. Don't worry about it because this is different for every dozer. You're just going to have to explore the menus. So when I flip this over, you're immediately going to hear the engine go full bore. Oops. Just kidding. I waited too long. There we go. I waited too long and it popped out of the menus. So we're So there it is. We're now full bore. And so now if I go in reverse with my decelerator, which is no longer a decelerator, with it pushed to the floor, we don't move. But if I start letting off, I'm only controlling track speed now. I'm not actually controlling engine RPM. So why would you want to do that? Well, today's actually a good example. I'm doing really heavy pushes straight uphill into this stockpile. And so what happens traditionally when you go into a pile and you're using it as a decelerator pedal is you will have your foot pressed so that you're not full bore slamming into the pile and that makes your engine RPM drop down. Well, as soon as you hit that pile and you let off your decelerator pedal, because your engine is kind of on the, the front side of the power curve, it's not really in that band where the turbo's kicked in and it's really putting out full power. Because you're not, you're kind of on the front side of that, it takes the engine a second to kind of rev up for the turbo to spool up and for that power to be applied. When we run it in this mode, when we're doing heavy bulking applications, you have that engine RPM already up there. You have that power at your fingertips and you can hit that pile and you can just start pushing. So like I said, that's not really a huge secret, but a lot of operators don't even know that this mode exists in dozers. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. The second thing I wanted to talk about, and I apologize, I can't do a better job of demonstrating on this job, but I have a stockpile. That's kind of all I'm working with today. But one of the things I want to talk about is one of the ways you can be the most efficient in a dozer is just to plan. So most people think of dozers as just being these, these bulk dirt machines and, and it doesn't take a whole lot of thought because you just push. And if you need the dirt someplace else, you just push. And so what often ends up happening is you end up hitting the same pile two or three different times because now we're going to shove it this way, but now we need it over here and now we need it over here. And so you end up moving material two or three times where if you had just taken the time to kind of strategize at the beginning of the day, you might only need to move it one time. And so the first thing I would encourage you guys to do is if you've never taken the time to walk the area you're about to doze, try it one morning. Take five minutes and go walk the area and figure out where your high spots are, where your fills are going to be, and start to plan how you're going to approach the job so that you can be more efficient and you're not 
changing kind of halfway through the day. Oh, I, I guess I need material to go this way instead of this way like I've been pushing all morning. That's gonna help you be more effective in the dozer. So another thing that I wanna talk about is more on the finish side. If you're doing finish dozing, um, and, and I've talked about this in multiple vlogs, which by the way, if you guys don't follow my vlog channel, I will link it up above. Uh, go follow that because I am constantly on jobs like this where I'm actually talking to the camera and it's not a, an official training video, but I do talk a lot about what I'm thinking about and how, you know, what my approach is and why I'm doing things a certain way. But all that to say, when we're doing finish work, ultimately once we bulk our material, we're going to have to go clean up. And in the there's multiple ways people do this. A lot of people will actually bulk their their dirt and then they're left with a bunch of windrows. So then they'll go push all those windrows, which leaves them with smaller windrows but a lot of windrows. And then they go push all those windrows. And so what ends up happening is you just spend half of the day chasing windrows around. Instead, what you need to do is absolutely do straight line pushes whenever possible, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. But once you get your straight line pushes and all of the bulking done, that's when you have to plan your cleanup. And so what I like to do is in a situation like this, I don't have any more room off the left side of this pile to work my material. I do have room on this right side. It doesn't necessarily look like it in the video, but I do have room on the right side of this pile to lose material. So I'm gonna take all of my windrows and I'm gonna start working them over to the right side. And I'm not actually gonna do it for the video because it would take too long and this is already gonna be a little lengthy, but what would happen is if we started working our windrows off to the right, I would start over here and I would pick my grade and then I would have all of the material roll off of the right side of the blade. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna move over to where our windrow is about half to, to three quarters of the way across our blade. We're gonna angle our blade all the way off to the right and we're gonna continue. We're gonna match the left side of our blade. We're gonna match grade and then the spoils are gonna roll off to the right. And after we do that three or four times to where we're about halfway up this pile, we're gonna have a good sized windrow. And then you can go back and you can do a straight line push and bulk that material up the hill. But then now we're gonna have a windrow off the left and a windrow off the right. But instead of having to come all the way back to the beginning of our pile to clean that up, all we have to do is grab that, that last windrow that went off the left side of our blade. So we're gonna pick that windrow up and we're gonna to continue to work that material off to where it ultimately needs to end up. And that's really important is to think about where your material needs to go and then work the material across. And by not chasing the windrows, but by working the windrows across your job site in a direction that they, the material needs to move, you're gonna be far more efficient than just bouncing from windrow to windrow to windrow, trying to chase those all over the job site. So that's another thing I wanted to talk about. Now let's double back to our straight line pushes. So <clears throat> I am gonna demonstrate this one, but in order to do that, I'm going to switch modes so that I'm not fighting to scream over the engine. Okay, so when we go to push, if you think about what's physically happening to a dozer when you turn, if we have our blade straight and we're gonna load her up pretty good here, if we're pushing straight, and we start to bog. So we've got a nice, good, full blade here and we're pushing. But if I wanna turn, and I wanna turn off to the right, you're gonna notice my right track slows down and my left track is now doing all of the pushing. That, we've effectively lost half of our pushing power when we're in the middle of a turn. Well, that's not very effective. I mean, there are times, obviously, that you have to turn. You, you can't not turn. But at the same time, if you plan the way you're gonna doze your job, you can figure out how to do the majority of your bulking in a straight line. And that allows you to apply all of the power of the machine because you're using both tracks. Now, another point I wanna make here, and let me back up so I'm not gonna slam myself down. Another point I wanna make is, <clears throat> Excuse me, pardon me. A lot of guys too like to use the blade angle to turn during a heavy push. And they're absolutely, don't hear me wrong, they're absolutely applications when that works really great. So we've got our blade loaded up here. And now let's say we wanna go off, we wanna turn off to the, uh, to the left here. I'm sorry, to the right. I'm gonna angle my blade to the left. And you can see that that's gonna start making us turn to the right. 
But the reason we're turning is because we're actually shedding material off to the left. So I'm actually not a fan of doing that unless I absolutely have to. Instead, what a lot of people don't realize is if you just slow your tracks down and allow them to grip a little better, you can still turn during a heavy push. So I'm gonna go full bore, and you can see we're sliding all over and we're not really turning. But if I slow my track down so that it can actually grip, notice how we're starting to turn. And I'm not shedding a bunch of material off the side of my blade. And now once I'm straight, I go back to full bore on my track speed, and we're able to keep all of that material. A lot of guys don't realize, a lot of people, dozer operators in general, don't realize that if you actually slow your track speed down, you can keep the amount of material you have on your blade and do the turning and maneuvering you need to. The problem is they just let all the way off the D-cell pedal because that's where the most power is. And again, that's where going into that full engine throttle mode will help as well because you can, you can slow your track speed without losing that torque curve. But really, if you slow your track speed down and allow those grousers to grab, you can do a lot of maneuvering and on heavy, heavy pushes, you can continue to push that heavy material without getting a ton of track spin. So knowing to slow your track speed down during a heavy push will also make you more efficient. So I don't really have any other great nuggets of wisdom to give you guys. Like I said, this is kind of more of as you, as you doze longer, you will develop all of these small techniques and tricks uh, that kind of help you become more efficient. And in all honesty, it's a really hard video to make talking about how to run a dozer more efficiently because there's so many things that you don't think about, you just do. Um, and I've been doing it for so long, it's really hard to put it all into context and talk about what I'm thinking about because I really don't think. It's just something that happens. But uh, I hope this has been helpful, what I've given you today. And I apologize, I'm just totally falling apart here at the end of this. But I do hope this has been helpful for you guys. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, drop them down below. And we'll catch you guys on the next video.